Oh, you, you... what? Good news. <laughs> Super. We're not interested in his good news. No, no, no. Can you just bear with me on this one, okay? I'm now going to explain why we live in a stupid country, okay? There was a man, we've got a picture of him here this week. He appeared in court, charged with uh, driving his motability scooter, okay, while three times over the drink drive limit. So he, he was banned from driving for a year. But the magistrate said you can carry on using your motability scooter. Now, stop and think about that for a moment because if he was drink driving, then it's a car, it's so therefore you lose your license. So how can we still allowed to use it? In which case, what they're saying is, it isn't, it isn't a, car. a car. So is it or me? isn't it? And they've <clears> taken his licence off. They've taken his licence away, and he says it's fair enough. No, I'm sorry, it isn't. It's iniquitous. It's absolutely... It's, it's like I walk home from the pub, and they say, are you over the drink drive limit? Go, yeah, but I'm walking. Mm, doesn't matter. And they take my, <laughs> they take my driving licence away, but say, it's OK, you can carry on walking. <laughs> but actually, it's slightly worse than that, in a way, because that... That motability scooter is walking, as far as he's concerned. That is his equivalent of walking, because exactly. he's disabled. So by, by banning him from driving, for being drunk, that they're, they're discriminating against disabled people. That's actually what's happening there. Give him the license back. It's, it's either yeah. driving or it isn't. It, it isn't. Honestly, so, yeah. I, I, I honestly believe Britain is now the worst country in the world. That's a cheery <laughs> note. And I'm sorry, but it is. It's just when that sort of thing happens and the man goes, that's fair enough. It isn't fair enough. <laughs> he should have leapt over the desk and well, wrung the neck of the magistrate. Said, not, is not it leapt, a car obviously. or not, isn't it a car? Not, not leapt, obviously. Not leapt. <laughs> Got Sorry. somehow driven his... But you say, yeah. is it a car or isn't it a car? Because if it isn't a car... Give him his licence back because he wasn't drink driving. Can I... <coughs> Can I just say... Probably not. <laughs> Can I just say... That is catastrophic noise. Oh, by the I way, Christine Scott Thomas has been in touch and she invited just you to a karaoke night. Just you. <laughs> it's tonight. But she has said she can really go for a man who can sing. Really. So, you know, mm. big loud voice. Doesn't have to be tuneful. Just belt it out loud. Some can Tom I, Jones numbers. Can I do Will Young? Do you love you then? <coughs> can you what? Do Will Young? <laughs> I'd quite like to operate on his eye, wouldn't you? Because I think if you go to hospitals to have something done, there'll be strangers. It's kind of antiseptic and impersonal. Mm. Whereas if we do it, if it's done by your mates. mates, with friendship, we can, we can do it for you with friendship and a spoon. Yeah. Cut it off. <laughs> and you'll be, you'll be grateful. I tell you what, instead of hurling abuse at each other, why, <coughs> excuse me, why don't we do the news? Yes, let's do the news. Yes. Car news. Yes. We can do some rock well. They're all nodding. <laughs> I don't, I've, I've just noticed that I started winking at millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit in my eye. Millions of people Great. are doing this, James, trust me. <laughs> right, let's get on with the proper news, and we start with uh, roadside news. You see, Little Chef have decided to get Heston Blumenthal in to revamp the famous Olympic breakfast, which is very popular, but perceived as rather unhealthy. So what's he done to it? What he's done is drizzled it with extra words. So you see, in the, no, he has. In the old, Olympic, uh, the old Olympic breakfast, you used to get British pork sausage. You now get outdoor reared British pork sausage. You <coughs> used to get... Um, Sorry, can I just say, outdoor reared sausage? Yes. Keeps pigs in their house. For well, quite. <laughs> Not from Richard, obviously. <laughs> you do have a horse in your house. On occasion, it has it's been... It's an indoor known. reared horse. It has been known. So you used to get two rashes of back bacon, but now you're going to get two rashes of Wiltshire cured back bacon. And you used to just get mushrooms, but now you get... <laughs> <laughs> you used to... <laughs> you used to get mushrooms, you know you when get... you really screw your eyes up to laugh like that? <laughs> Something comes out of your eye infection. <laughs> and if it's you get it on me, I'll kill you. It. It. God, it's, it is it's like sharing a sofa it. with a leper. <laughs> is it leprosy? Just tell me straight, <laughs> is it? Because if it's, it is... It's just an eye infection. Look. <laughs> Hear no evil, see no evil. <laughs> Honest, it, you sound like a broken gate creaking in the wind. You're rotting in front of me. What do they call these mushrooms, James? Mushrooms I'm not hungry now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms have become roasted field mushrooms. I ate food ponsery. Can I just say, okay, you know Aston Martin laid off 600 people this week. Why didn't they just change the name of the DB9 to an organic, free-range Oxfordshire DB9? 
And then we all would have bought one. But anything sells better if you give it a county in its name. It's no, no, it doesn't. Depends which county you're talking about. I'm not going to buy a Jaguar West Midlands. <laughs> I'm trying to... Yeah, some counties have more glamour than others. I'm not going to buy a Nissan Powys. No, it's got to be the right county. Or anything from Norfolk. <laughs> it's from Norfolk. So that was, again, just dogs could hear that bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is temporary. That, on the other hand. I suspect it's going to get bigger and bigger until... Yeah, all right. He told like... me earlier on that he's worried if he does go to the doctors with it, they might cut off the wrong bit, throw him away, <laughs> and send him to <laughs> come back. Well, we need it. I think it could be the size of a cauliflower this time next week. Tune in. Wow, what if it, if it gets big enough to have to dress it with clothes? <laughs> it won't be an eye patch, it'll be an eye box you'll be wearing next week. <laughs> a big eye bag. Shh. Oh, just, but just, just a good one result. point, your buttons have come undone on your shirt and it's distracting me quite madly. They're really happening. But as I was just out the corner of my eye, I could just see two breasts. <laughs> You're not that ill then, are you? No, I'm not ill. That's the ridiculous thing. I'm not ill at all. I'm in good, good form, good Let's shape. Look. Oh, never mind, you've lost your... Oh, James can't see. <laughs> Yes. Don't hang that great pustulous thing over me. He's just giving your breasts leprosy. <laughs> ah. OK, you two. Who is the best motorcyclist of all time? Uh, uh, Rossi, probably. Uh, Mike Halewood. Mike Halewood. You're both wrong. In fact, the greatest motorcyclist who ever lived is an Indian chap that I found on the internet this week. Just have a look at this. Here he is, riding along, OK? And you're probably thinking, well, what's so great? Ready? Look at this. He's, he's texting. And he's lying down. How's, how's he making the throttle work? Because I thought if his foot was on the bars, he could... How's metal. he doing that? <laughs> That's astonishing. I mean, I, the, the thing I've got to ask you, OK, what if there's an emergency, and this being India is likely to be one about here, how does he brake? Well, I don't know, because he's nowhere near any of the things he needs to be near, like his brakes and clutches. He'll have to get back on the bike first, and uh, then enjoy his crash. Well, That's well done, you. That's That's you know I've got that old Motor Guzzi, which I think is sort of cool and laid back yeah. in old California. It's like sitting in church compared with that bloke. I know. That is the best bit of motorcycling I've ever seen. Stop That's looking standard. at my eyeball. <coughs> I can't <coughs> see anything else when I look in that direction. Well, how much do you think I can see out of this bloke? Well, very little. You can't see this. <laughs> You're right, I can't. See this. <laughs> is it weeping stuff or have you had it varnished so it's all nice and shiny? <laughs> Listen. Hammond, can I just get it back on track? Oh, I know it's, it's distracting. It's distracting! And you're sitting next to him. He's got a space hopper stuck to his <laughs> eye. <laughs> <coughs> Do you want to use a little No, bit don't touch anything I've got! Oh, God, no! I could just rinse off the bit of makeup that's covering your huge spot, Hammond. <laughs> oh, that's true. I had forgotten about that. He I has too have got leprosy. a whopper. Yeah, it's massive. It's I got too have opinion. leprosy, actually, if I'm honest there. Can we just forget yeah. our illnesses? Nobody's interested. <laughs> So no, but that's got makeup on it. I'm just joining what in with the leprosy thing. What we're not seeing is the thing. pulsating redness of it. It's a supernumerary head. I think it winked. Actually, at me I think it's wrong. a supernumerary penis, and it's going to sprout out of you <laughs> another one. That could be all. But it could be okay. Actually. It's the same size as that there one. There you go. One. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, look. This is the Citroen Hypnos. It's an experimental car, and the interesting thing is, it's fitted with a camera inside on the roof, which looks at your face. It reads your emotions, they say, and then it adjusts the cabin lighting and fragrance accordingly. So it changes the smell according to your mood or and, what it... And the lighting. Yes, and the lighting. What does angry smell like? <laughs> do you do that? Like? What does scared smell like? I know what it smells like. <laughs> How do you represent regret with cabin lighting? In a car? <laughs> they, uh, they haven't actually worked out. A wistful sense out. of loneliness. Oh. This car <laughs> smells funny. I know I was displeased with my postman this morning. <laughs> a French have gone mad, haven't they? Yeah, they haven't actually worked out the details, but that's what they say it will do. I think it would be better if it was sort of wired into the stereo system, so if your wife left it, it could play Phil Collins. That would be better. I can't sing I any Phil Collins say, songs before you. I can't remember any. And I'm not going it. to sing you if you leave me now. That's Chicago, actually. Yeah. I'll take away the biggest... And why am I saying this to you? <laughs> I don't want to say this to you. 
I've been working with the... James, no, look, you've got brochure news. I have got brochure news, consumer news, something we're often criticised for not doing on Top Gear. This is the brochure for the uh, BMW 3 Series. Now, there's a range of options on this car. There are 13 colours, there are 8 or 9 interior trim colours, and there are 5 different finishes for the wood on the dashboard. So BMW have helpfully made one of those charts that show you what you can have with what, putting a little black blob, do you know what I mean, next to the things you can have. And here is the chart. There you are. Well, hang on. That's, uh, it's just got a blob, but you can have, just, have anything, they should have that, just said. That's just a waste of paper. Yeah, exactly. You're wrong, you see. Look! There! No blob! <laughs> well, they've, done, right. they've done that whole page just to tell you you can't have... What's that, then? Well, that means, if you are thinking of buying a 3 Series, you cannot have beige vertex upholstery with any colour and burr walnut wood. See, that's just fascism, isn't it? Didn't it it is, really. It would take you a while to spot the one missing blob the one in the BMW thing. Room, did it? I wish um, I'd been there when you did that. I did that after I calculated how many revs my uh, portion. Just to share that search. Is I there? Think, is there? I think they did that page, realised that everything was available with everything, and thought, that's embarrassing, so they deliberately took one out to make the page look relevant. Uh, I bet if you go in and ask Is that why they deliberately it, lost the war? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I bet if you go in and ask for it... You can have it. Right, now listen, <laughs> you know the government has pledged to halve the amount of carbon dioxide that we all make, bar, well, within the next 17 years, OK? Now, there's this woman on the Climate Change Committee, which is a sort of government thing. She says that we've all, basically, all of us, including you with your Peugeot 406, have got to buy an electric vehicle. And she says these electric vehicles are going to run on novel batteries charged by carbon-free electricity that we shall somehow make without harming any fluffy polar bears or anything. What does she mean by novel batteries? Novel. Well, obviously, she has no idea how these batteries will actually work, um, other than the fact they're going to be running on magic and made in the forest by <laughs> oblins. <laughs> No so she hasn't really worked out the details of this, has no. she? She's sort of worked for Citroen. No, exactly. Is she good looking? Uh, is she what? Good looking. Uh, I have actually got a picture of her here. You ready? Well, <laughs> ma maybe she's funny. <laughs> Rich. Really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough? This is the woman that's going to ruin your life. Maybe she's all of those things. I would rather <laughs> sit and improve this. I'm going to need someone to spit in my mouth. Could you do it? I can. It's not going to be spit. No, as such, just but it'll do the trick. <laughs> do you want to do this? What should we move? Oh on? yes, no. I'm sorry. There is can one I just, more. Can thing I just? Can I just mention? While you're topping up on somebody else's spit. Yes. Um, the Catalonia racetrack near Barcelona. Mm. They have finally decided, they're now permitting, and I'm quoting here, um, hey, see, they've finally permitted human ra remains to be scattered on the track. You can scatter human remains all over. So presumably that means really bad racing crashes are now allowed for the first no, time. No, Richard, I think it means after you're dead, if you're a fan of the track, you can be, you know, oh. scattered on it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Although that said, do you have to be cremated? Or you could just go down there and be part of the tyre wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I'd quite like to just... <laughs> I think what they mean is that when somebody's dead, you can scatter their ashes on their favourite bit of the track. God, no, that'd be lethal. Because it'd be, oh, he's in the lead, he's in the lead. Oh, no, he's skidded off on a bit of Frank Dobson from Batley and he's in the... <laughs> what, the uh, former health minister? Yeah. You suggested the former health ministers, we'll be London Mayor there. contender, is going to be yeah. scattered on the... It was the first name that came to mind. That's fantastic. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Well, if there's a really bad oil spill on one of the corners, they could just so soak, it up with <laughs> <laughs> soak it up with Frankie Howard, I was going to say. It's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Frankie Howard? Where are these yeah. names coming from? You've both gone mad. I've had this idea, though. Honestly, I was thinking about this just the other day. When I die, OK, I want them to put my body in Peter Mandelson's front room. <laughs> Just to be annoying. It, I think it would annoy him, because I bet he's got a really minimalist house. Just to have you there, <laughs> rotting. <laughs> not, not preserved or anything, then. No, Just and all not... his friends come back and they'd say, what's that, it's Jeremy Clarkson, he's rotting. <laughs> Not mummified, just rotten. No, just left, literally. But well, he's made a start liquefied. on that already, look, he's already... <laughs> Shall we do a bit more? No, I tell you what, we're going to stop doing the news now.
Get it back onto cars, quickly. Okay. Yes, let's get back towards cars. And um, we've always thought that there's absolutely no reason for anyone to buy a Peugeot, is there? Really? Why? Mm, why? Anyone think of a reason for buying a Peugeot? <laughs> what? <laughs> So you could crash it? Yeah, <laughs> no, There's not. no as well. Peugeot have obviously given this some thought and they've come up with the reason. They've brought out this car. It's called the Partner TP. Yeah. No, wait, no. Ha, ha. You see, you're judging before you know why <laughs> Peugeot think you're going to want it. What they've done is fit it with like a roof box over the top there. But which what, on the inside? On the inside of the car, it's got a long, thin box, which they say is perfect for the person who wants to store like a surfboard. Sur is there anybody Sur here who is a surfer? Okay. Not any are you a surfer somewhere else? So you're not. So when you said not in England, what you meant? Well, not ever. <laughs> so unfortunately, naught well, percent of the British people want to buy that car. What they're looking for is somebody who wants a car with a loft you could keep a surfboard in. Yes. So it's fairly who's completely blind and doesn't notice the car is as ugly as a battered hamster? That's the buyer they're yeah. after. Have you heard about this bloke that's um, building this flying car, which he reckons will be ready in two years' time? Oh, God, you know, I saw that in the, inevitably, the Daily Mail. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a guy, OK, he says that uh, it's going to cost half a million pounds. It's based on a Ferrari 599, and instead of having a normal engine, it's got eight fans, which sort of point backwards, so you go along, yeah? And then when the traffic gets a bit sticky, they tilt, and you lift off, and you can fly for 75 miles at 100 miles an hour over the traffic. Uh, apparently, it's the brainchild of a man called Mr. Culkins. Apparently, he came up with the idea while he was doing his maths homework. <laughs> <laughs> and then he thought of some anti-gravity <clears throat> shoes and a magic-powered car. <laughs> We've got a picture of it, actually. What, well, not it? it. Of the car, there is it is. Is that him at the back? No, actually, that's Dr. Moller. He's a, he's a very respected American advocate of flying cars. It's a problem he's been working on for about 30 years, and I've met him. He's extremely intelligent, extremely capable, and he believes fervently in alien abduction. See? Yes. So he's... Alleged. He's very I'm not like you're not allowed to say someone. Who no, you just did. He is okay, he's got a beard. <coughs> He has. He's, got a bit of one, yes. He's woken up one morning and thought, I believe in alien abduction, I believe I look better with this beard. Can I ask a question about flying cars? Yeah. Why would you drive along the road and wait until the traffic got really busy and then think, oh, do you know, this traffic's really heavy, I think I'll take off? <laughs> Why would you not just fly somewhere in the first place? Do you know that's a brilliant car? point? What is the it point is. of flying cars? Why are they trying to invent it? Why would you want they to have. drive around? It'd be like a, it a, a captain just setting off with his 747. Actually, the M4 looks quite empty. I'll just yeah. drive down. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's getting busy. I'll take <laughs> off. I think what they're after is something we already have. It's called an aeroplane. Yeah. If you're watching. Now, can I just show you something? Have a look at this. <laughs> have you ever seen anything like that? It's that cashmere top, the yeah. Ugg boots, the Louis Vuitton She's bag. She's lovely. She, she is really the happiest, is. prettiest girl I've seen in ages. Just an absolute delight to have absolutely her on the show. Absolutely lovely. Okay, now, what's next? Now, political news from this week. Barack Obama? No. Has he walked on water? Channel 4 News seems to think he can. No, no. <laughs> Has he turned all of Lake Tahoe into wine? No. It's Has he made fish out of bread? No. Has he cured leprosy? No, none of those That's things. That's a bit disappointing. Yet. No, no, it is Boris Johnson. Boris. Because he's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we look. We do love a bit of Boris. <clears throat> he said, said and I'm, I'm really because he's gone on record as saying he wants to stop punishing motorists. And he says well, this. Where's that? Why is that a bad thing? Well, he says this. He wants to clear the streets of traffic throttling excrescences. <laughs> Boris, what you've done there, mate, is slipped into Latin. What does it mean? Excrescences. Is that is that a proper word? In Does anybody here know what excrescences mean? Do you know what it means? Excrescences? Teeth whitening? I don't think it is that. I don't see the link there. James, you're a man wearing a dead snake. Do you have any idea? No, but I think it must have the same root as words like... I think it's poo related. Yeah, it is. He wants to clear London of, of poo. What, 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 what did he call Traffic throttling poo. Traffic throttling poos. Pars yeah. I, I thought they were uh, mini roundabouts. Well, They're to be honest, roundabouts. I'd have thought that'd have been the sort of thing we'd have noticed by now. <laughs> You'd have seen that. If anybody out there is watching who is a Roman emperor who knows what <laughs> Boris is on about, do please write to us at uh, BBC Top Gear. Uh, where are we? It'll be. It'll be I.I. I. 
No, it won't. It'll be I I blank V11 Woodus Lane, Londinium, near Colchester, <laughs> W X Y I V11 TS. Hey. Drop us a line now. <laughs> Find out what Boris is going to do. Hey, rejoice, everybody. Nissan have come up with the future, the future of motoring. Here it is. <laughs> now, Nissan have worked out, OK, that I think they're saying over half the world's population will live in cities within a couple of years. And that unless we all start to drive something smaller, there will just be complete gridlock. So that's their answer. How small is that? It's about one foot five less than the Fiat I was looking at earlier, so... Oh, wow, well, there you go. Gridlock averted. The world is saved by that. Okay, the problem isn't that roads are too short, is it? If we're honest. <laughs> no, this road's too sh narrow, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I think the problem is the man responsible for this car, okay, I think he concentrated more on dreaming up an interesting-sounding job title than he did on the car itself, because he's called Francois Bancon, so I'm presuming he's not Japanese. No. Sounds more like one of your lamb burners. <laughs> Francois Bancon, right? And his job title, I'm not joking, is General Manager. Exploratory and Advanced Planning Department. Product Strategy and Product Planning Division. Nissan Motor Company Limited. What? <laughs> he's going to have... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Check it out, Chicky. I am the general manager. Ex well, he's, he's never going to pull a bird with a job like that, is he? He wouldn't have had that job title in the ear of Dymo tape, would he? <laughs> if, he'd had to do it with that. if he'd made a cock up at Nissan. Mind you, just imagine his business card. Take him off and have to get out of his pocket. I'll give him a card. Look, it's articulated. How many people here are interested in buying that? So that's 0% of the people in Britain are interested in the future of motoring. We conducted a survey we can Which take. is good. And that, I think, concludes the news this week, which went well.